one more night with the frogs. There's a lot of frogs out here right now, but you aren't going to be able to hear them too good because of the waterfall in the background there and the water running here beside me. And, and uh, it's not really evening time yet, so they're still not really croaking at this point in time, but definitely a lot of frogs down here. But uh, you say, what on earth are you talking about? What kind of sermon is this? One more night with the frogs. Well, let's go to Exodus chapter 8. A very fascinating story. Book of Exodus, way back in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 8, verse 5. Begin there. Read down to verse 15. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over, over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Uh, there are people in Satanism that can mim imitate a lot of the miracles of God. Look out for the faith healing movement. Verse 8, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord and that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Hey, things are really bad in my life. Could you, could you please ask the Lord to get rid of this stuff? Could you please pray for me? I want help getting rid of this horrible stuff, the judgment of God that's upon me. There's a lot of judgment of God that's upon this world right now. All the wildfires and all the flooding and all the tornadoes and all the other horrible things, just like Jesus Christ said it would be in the last days. Those are all judgments from God and people say, please pray for me, please pray for us, we need your prayers. Things are rough for us, please pray for us. Verse 9, And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, to destroy the frogs from thee, and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? Moses says, hey, great, this is great. Okay, when should I ask, or when should I tell the Lord, and entreat the Lord there, you know, plead with him, to take away all the frogs, to take away all the problems that you're having? When should I entreat for you? Now you would think that Pharaoh would say, the sooner the better. I mean, you know, as soon as you can, Moses, please. But what's he say? Verse 10, And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. Tomorrow? You mean Pharaoh wanted to spend one more night with the frogs? The judgment of God is upon him? You'd think that he'd want it gone. That he'd say, Please get it out of my life. I don't want this anymore. Please get it away from me. But he says, oh, Tomorrow. We'll spend one more night with the frogs. Interesting too, because back in the book of Revelation, the spirit of a devil is likened to a frog. Hmm. A little bit of a tie in there, but let's continue. Verse 11. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, and out of the villages, and out of the fields, and they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. The Lord knew what Pharaoh was going to do. But you see, Pharaoh, not only does he say, just do it tomorrow, we'll deal with these frogs, the curse of God upon us, we'll deal with it just one more night. But then when he sees that God kind of backs off a little bit. You know, after the fires go through and destroy everybody's homes, and after the tornadoes wipe out people's houses, and the floods destroy, and the people go, oh, this is just terrible, and God, please help us. And God helps them, what do they do? They harden their heart, and they say, I'm going to turn against God. I don't need God. We got this. We're Texas strong. We're California strong. We're strong. We're American. America the proud. They harden their hearts. Instead of turning to the Lord and saying, God, please help us. Please, I'll change my life. I want to get saved. I want to serve you. Nope. A little bit. Pray for us. Everything. And then they go right back to their wicked, sinful life. And forget all about the judgment of God. Hebrews chapter 11. To the New Testament now. Hebrews chapter 11, 
another very telling verse. Start in verse 24. By faith, Moses, that we were just reading back there, about back there when he was dealing with Pharaoh. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Hmm. So Pharaoh is hardening his heart. Moses is looking at the judgment of God upon his sin, and he's saying, you know what? I don't want anything to do with that. Well, they had it better. Believe me, the people in Egypt had it much better than Moses and the children of Israel that are out wandering in the wilderness. I'm not sure where their next meal's coming from. Down in Egypt, they're doing fine. But Moses looks and he says, that's the pleasure of sin for a season. I don't want anything to do with it. I see the judgment of God upon those people, and I'm getting away from it. I don't want to go there. You know, a lot of people out there want to spend another night with the frogs. God judges them. They experience the wrath and the, and, and the judgment of Almighty God upon them. And they lose everything. And they don't turn to God. They do for a little bit. And then the insurance policy kicks in or people help out or whatever else and FEMA Relief Center. and All of a sudden they're back to hating God again. Back to their old wicked past. How sad. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 38. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Um, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Oh, I just want another night with the frogs. I just, I just want a little bit more sin. And, and yep, yeah, there's judgment there. Yeah, I go out to drink and it costs me money. It costs me my health. It costs me my relationships. I'm just going to go out and fornicate. It costs me heartache. It costs me busted up marriages and, and people threatening me and whatever. But just one more night with the frogs. Just a little bit more time to experience sin. Why? Why? Why not deny yourself? You're not a good person. You say, how do you do this? Deny yourself. And get rid of your self-righteousness. Do you deserve to go to hell and burn forever? You say, well, I don't think... Okay, you're self-righteous. If you can look at me and say, yeah, I would deserve to go to hell for all the wicked things I've done. Okay, now you're at step one. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you see. You start to fear God and say, you know what? I deserve His wrath. I deserve to be judged by Him. Now that points you to the cross. Because you're not going to trust in yourself anymore. You're no longer trusting in your own self-righteousness to get you saved, you see. You're now looking to the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, can you do something about my wicked condition? The Lord says, uh, well, there's... Do you want to spend another night with the frogs? Are you kidding me? No. Get me out of this. I don't want this life anymore. I don't want the bars and the drug addiction and the pornography and the... Name it. I don't want it. I want to get saved. Please, God, could you please save me? Tell me what I need to do. Show me from your word how to be saved. Romans chapter 6. The book of Romans in chapter 6. 
When you get saved, this is what will happen. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? When you die to yourself, you, you know, you're, you're basically, you know, Jesus Christ dies in your place, you know, sure, but you are dying to yourself at that point in time. You're not looking at yourself and saying, I'm a good person. It's all about Jesus Christ from that point on. That's what the, the new birth is all about. And at that point in time, there's no, you know, you look and you say, well, my sins are, are things that messed me up and whatever else. I don't want to continue in that. I want to live, live a new life. And we're not going to read this whole chapter here, but you can go down through this thing and see the difference between the old life of sin and the new life as a Christian where, yes, you will sin. Yes, you will mess up. But you're, it's not a purposeful thing of just going back to the bar again and just messing around. You see, you try to get out of that stuff as a lost person, you might kind of succeed, but you're still going to go into something else. You don't have the Holy Spirit of God to convict you of sin. You need to be born again, you see. That's the difference there. But the Bible is very, very negative to sin because sin is very, very negative to man. I mean, do you think it was a good thing for Pharaoh? Do you think he just kind of kicked back that night and let the frogs jump all over him and his wife running in and screaming and things and these frogs, I can't take these frogs and stuff. Why would he want to have one more night with the frogs? Well, probably pretty much because of the same reason that you want to have one more night with the frogs. One more night of sin. The pleasures of sin for a season. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll finish up here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a whole lot more scriptures we could go over, but I'll just read this to you yet. Verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Um, as a Christian, you're not going to live sinlessly per perfect. Sure, I understand. But there's a sense there where you're not supposed to be sinning just openly understanding that this is wrong. Well, I'm going to do it anyhow. You're not supposed to do that. You are to awake to righteousness. You are dead. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. And now you're living as a new creature in Christ Jesus. Awake to that righteousness. You are born again. You're a new creature in Christ. And if you're lost... And you have never experienced that new birth. Well, you, you know, if you're lost, you definitely haven't. Um, you need to have that experience. You need to pass from death unto life. And that sinful life that you live where you're just always having corruption, always having trouble and everything else. You need to give that life up. You know, it's self-destructive. Why do you want to keep on holding on to it? It's ridiculous. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Do you think about eternity? Do you think about where you're going to go when you die? I certainly hope you do. Because if all you care about is the fastest car and the latest vehicle and the biggest houses and the best clothing and the who's going to win the election next time and whatever else, you're wasting your life. You are wasting your life. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ today as a sinner. Not as a, well, I've, well, I've done my best to really clean my life up. You're going to be impressed, God. God's not impressed with your self-righteousness. He wants you coming and being honest about your condition, your lost condition. He wants you to come and be saved. Are you going to do it today? I pray you make the right decision.